you've had a bit of a win, haven't you, with this veterans hotline? Yeah, it's good news. I mean, uh, we've got a promise to end veterans sleeping rough in this country by the end of this year. There's not uh, as many as people think, but there are those who come out and find uh, life outside the forces really difficult. You know, we've got a duty to these people. We want to make this the best country in the world to be a veteran. So Op Fortitude is what we're launching today. You know, we've bought uh, 910 supported housing placements, £8.5 million. Uh, anyone who, uh, any veteran who's, who's homeless in this country can dial up the hotline and get referred into one of these places and they'll get wraparound help. Substance abuse, addiction, debt, all the rest of it, and uh, so get their lives the back on track. Chatting. So they just need to get to call or get someone to call that number? Yeah, call or get someone to call that number. Um, we've trained up some uh, advisors with uh, Riverside Housing Group. Uh, we've got nine other providers all around the country. It's a good little network, it's a good setup, and uh, there's no need for a veteran to be sleeping rough, and I don't want to see anyone sleeping rough by the end of this year. Is there any need for military personnel to be using food banks? Um, Deborah Haynes, our defence editor, carried that story last month. Look, these are these are personal decisions around uh, um, uh, you know how people um, are budgeting every month. I don't want to see anyone using food banks. Of course, I don't. But we're you know we're in an extremely difficult time around uh, the cost of living. I'll always advocate for service personnel to get paid more. I'd be mad not to. But it has to be you know within the constraints of a budget. And to be fair. You know, this Prime Minister only two years ago gave defence the, the biggest settlement that we've seen uh, uh, since the end of the Cold War, actually. So, um, look, I think uh, none of these People things are black and white. People don't choose to use food banks, do they? Say again? People don't choose to use food banks. You're saying it's a, ch it's a choice whether they use them or not. It's not. They're using them because they, they're saying they have no other alternative. Well, in my experience, Kay, that's not correct. Um, I think uh, there are some dire cases that we need to do more to wrap our arms around and make sure that um, there is a safety net for people. I don't think food bank use is an accurate uh, portrayal of where levels of poverty, relative or absolute poverty, are in this country. Um, I don't want to see anybody using food banks, but, uh, you know, I think that... Uh, being in the military still affords you a good wage and a good quality of life and, uh, um, you know, and uh, that will continue to be the case. Uh, what about the banks? Um, the financial watchdog is calling them in. They've had enough. They say that they are basically profiting because they're not putting saving rates up the same way as they're putting up mortgage rates. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, interest rates are going up and the government wants to see those pass on, on to savers and, uh, you know, it's uh, you don't want to see any profiteering like this, particularly when, you know, life is really, really tough for people out there at the moment uh, around interest rates. So, yeah, look, it doesn't sound good and I, I expect the Treasury will look at it today. OK, well, they, they're actually being called in um, by the financial watchdog to explain themselves. Do you think... I mean, because you know what the rates are, you know what uh, you could get on a, on a... If you're lucky enough to be saving, what you can get at the moment, as opposed mm. to what it might cause you for uh, a mortgage difference being 6.42% or 2.48%. Sounds like profiting to me. It does sound like profiteering. I think you got a fairly strong co uh, quote there from uh, someone on the Treasury Select Committee. I mean, the regulators will call them in and let's see what happens. OK. They say in response that it's regulatory overreach and uh, the Financial Conduct Authority should not be getting involved with this and thus by extension I suppose they're saying the government as well. Could it be? OK, you must forgive me, but I am the Veterans Minister. I don't, I don't work in the Treasury. I, I'm sure this will work itself out. Clearly, you know, where interest rates are, are higher, um, we, you want to see those pass on to savers, but I'm sure this will be thrashed out today. OK, let me talk to you in more detail then about something you will know about, and that is the uh, Prime Minister. He's been in post now for six months. Yeah. Um, he uh, is in front of the liaison committee later on. He's been telling people to hold their nerve yeah. over interest rates. Yeah. What do you say to people on the doorstep when you are talking it, to them? Exactly the that. Look, we're in an incredibly tight and difficult financial situation in this country caused by a no number of competing factors. And you speak to one person, you'll get one view and another, another view. Including the truth trust is, messing it up. I'm sorry? Including this trust messing it up. Well, look, we've been through all that a hundred times. I think that, uh, um, you know, actually the, the economy has recovered to an, an outcome and um, uh, income, sorry, has, has, has uh, gone back to where it was before the Liz Truss budget. I think the truth is with, you know, with all this, that we are in a global market and interest rates around the world uh, are going up and inflation is a global problem. Um, I think we've got to be honest with people about what actually brings that down because, you know, there's a big debate around public sector pay and so on. Interest rates have just gone up. The number one factor that is a fact affecting cost of living in, for my constituents in Plymouth is inflation. The Prime Minister is absolutely right that we have to hold our nerve on this and continue to bring it down. There's nothing a given about 
inflation coming down. You actually have to do something. You have to make difficult decisions and you have to be honest with people. And that, that is what he has always been and that is what he's being now. So, look, I know that we, you know, generally look for, for pretty smooth outcomes and, um, you know, quick answers and all this stuff. There isn't one, OK? We all, every single day we wake up in Whitehall and we're like, what are we going to do about inflation? Because we see the impact it's having in our communities. Um, he's absolutely right. Interest rates have gone up now. We need to hold our nerve. Um, and things are going to get better, right? Things are, we're, we're going through a difficult time, but things are going to get better. Yeah, but, you know, you know how people are struggling, some of them in your, in your constituency, struggling to pay their mortgages, struggling to feed the kids, struggling to keep the house warm. And then they're hearing from a billionaire who's telling them to hold their nerve. That must stick in their craw. OK, I've got to be honest. The, the whole sort of class war stuff against the Prime Minister is... Uh, really goes down badly in places like mine, which is one of the most deprived co constituencies in the UK. They want someone who's actually extremely gifted, extremely talented, uh, very capable, knows what he's on about. They actually feel like they trust him with this stuff. They couldn't care less how much money he's got. They couldn't care less about how he gets around the country. Um, actually, they want him to sort the economy out, uh, to do everything he possibly can around interest rates. They actually feel like he's the best person to be in charge at the moment uh, when you're dealing with a financial crisis. So, look, I, I see the contrast in the media, but I'm afraid I, I just Aye, don't recognise that. that's it. Blame the media. That's no, I'm not blaming the media. I can see why, why, you know, it's an obvious, you know, it's an obvious thing to go for, right? I'm just saying that's not reflected on the doorstep and these are the people who actually go and vote for us. And, you know, whilst I have huge respect for your opinion, Keir, as you well know, over many it's years... It's not my opinion. Um, that's not the opinion I see reflected on the doorstep who actually vote for me and are really struggling with this stuff every OK, day. talk to me about uh, what the Prime Minister has been saying about Just Stop Oil. Yeah. Uh, he's not at all happy. He's been... Uh, he's written an article in the Sun newspaper about that this morning. He's praising, basically, Johnny Burstow for what he did, getting mm. them off the pitch at Laws. What's your view on Just Stop Oil? Look, I, I think they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot, right? Because everybody wants to do better on the environment. We all recognise the challenge around the environment and everyone wants to do better on it. The idea that these individuals can cause so much disruption to the country and to people going about their everyday work. You've got small business owners trying to get to appointments. They don't turn up, then the, whoever's employing them will just go elsewhere. Having a massive impact on, on people's life, I think, I think it's completely disproportionate. And the big problem is, it is actually turning people against what is a really important cause. Uh, so I think, look, the Prime Minister's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, you've seen legislation change. Um, and, and we need to make sure that always we protect the right to protest, absolutely. But the uh, disproportionate nature of some of these things is, is clearly unacceptable. Can't remember if you're a cricket fan or not. Um, I Can mean, <laughs> yeah, I like cricket. Do you? Yeah. Uh, do you? What do you think about the cheating Aussies? Well, I mean, it wasn't actually che cheating, was it? I, this time. I mean, previously, obviously, they did the whole sandpaper thing and then uh, when they got caught, you know, were crying all over the media. So I don't think you're going to get any particular fair play out of these. I think you've just got to give them a good pacing when you get the chance, and I hope that happens in the next test match. <laughs> well, we'll see. Is it Edge Best I can't remember. Yeah. It's good to see you as always. Thanks very much indeed, Jessica. Thank you.